The Interphone Study Group has just released results of its 13-country study examining the link between brain tumors and cell phones. This is the study the world has been waiting for for years, with no good explanation for the delay. Finally, after the European Parliament has called the delay deplorable, the Interphone Study has published its results. However, activists and scientists the world over are up in arms because of the deceptions in this study. Recently, a scientific study funded by the cell phone industry called the Interphone Study was published to answer the question of whether or not radiation generated by cell phones causes brain tumors. This just published study is seriously flawed. In fact, the study is so flawed that 30 plus million dollars later, the results are of little value. All data has been available since 2004, yet much still remains unpublished. It is time to release the full data set to independent researchers. A group of experts, including myself, co-authored a report titled Cell Phones and Brain Tumors, 15 Reasons for Concern. The purpose of our report is to explain these flaws in the Interphone study, hoping that the media, governments, and the public will understand what so many independent scientists already know. Cell phones are causing brain tumors. This is not an opinion, this is the science. The telecom industry says weight of the evidence shows there is no risk from cell phone use. However, remove the telecom funded studies and the overwhelming weight of the evidence is that there is a very significant risk of getting a brain tumor from cell phone use. Independent studies, as outlined in our report, find the higher the cumulative hours of cell phone use, the higher the risk, the higher the number of years since first use, the higher the risk, the higher the power radiated, the higher the risk. The younger the user is when cell phone use begins, the higher the risk. One study found a 420% increased risk of brain tumors when cell phone use began when they were teenagers or younger. We want the public to understand that the industry's research did not include all brain tumor types, eliminated people from the analysis who died of their brain tumor. To find a regular cell phone user as someone who used a phone as little as once a week and decided that people who were cordless phone users but were not cell phone users were unexposed, thereby treating brain tumors in cordless phone users as unrelated to the very same radiation from cell phones. If we want to learn if a coin is biased, that is flawed, all we have to do is flip the coin, say, 50 times. And if it comes up heads four times and tails 46 times, we know it is biased to come up tails. If we want to learn if a study is biased, we look at the number of times it finds a risk result compared to a protective result. This study reports 207 protective results and 29 risk results. Funded by the cell phone industry, are we surprised that it would be biased? We have identified 11 design flaws that underestimate the risk of brain tumors in the interphone study. This is why the study finds using a cell phone protects the user from a brain tumor. Two of these flaws result in most of the protective effect. The interphone researchers admit there is a problem called selection bias and states the, this underestimates the risk by 10% but does not explain the whole problem. The other problem is ignoring cordless phone radiation. This is probably a larger contributor than selection bias. Cordless phones, based on cell phone technology, admit very similar radiation to cell phones. The interphone study asks all persons if they use a cordless phone. Yet, they treated cordless phone use as a non-exposure. Unlike previously published interphone studies, in this study, there is not one mention of cordless phones. Independent studies show that cordless phones also cause brain cancer. There are many similar examples of how this flawed telecom industry funded interphone study grossly underestimates the risk. In fact, it is so flawed that the major finding has been that use of a cell phone protects the user from a brain tumor. This is ludicrous. Mysteriously, the identity of the designers of the study are unknown. 
Nobody has been made available to answer these egregious design flaws that terribly mislead our society into believing that cell phone use is safe. The European Parliament has insisted these designers should also explain to the public what were the circumstances behind the four-year delay in publishing the full 13 country results. Even more disturbing than the four-year delay is the discovery that this flawed study does not report the data from acoustic neuromas. This tumor of the acoustic nerve is closest to where the phone is placed. At a minimum, we are calling for the Interphone report to immediately publish the acoustic neuroma results and to withdraw all 16 previously published brain tumor and salivary gland studies because they didn't include cordless phone exposures. Then, the results should be reanalyzed with cordless phone users as exposed and the corrected results republished for each of these 16 studies. The public and the governments who funded this research of cell phones and brain tumors should not let the industry get away with this. The telecom industry is a $4 trillion international business and spends billions on media ads, government taxes, and the rights to the airwaves. Perhaps this study is like the fox reporting on the condition of the chickens. Please contact your government representatives and help us bring attention to this profound conflict of interest. Please read the report, Cell Phones and Brain Tumors, 15 Reasons for Concern, which is available to download at the website shown on this screen. And please share it widely in your community. And please support these watchdog groups that are committing their lives to enforcing corporate social responsibility in the name of public health. Thank you. My name is Lloyd Morgan. I'm an electronic engineer by training, now retired, a member of the international science group, the Bioelectromagnetic Society, a volunteer with the National Brain Tumor Society, and a brain tumor survivor. In 1995, I had a brain tumor that nearly killed me. And when I asked my neurosurgeon why I got this thing, he answered, perhaps electromagnetic fields. So I went to the science and immediately found studies written by the Electric Power Research Institute that showed a significant risk of brain tumors and leukemia. Since then, I have devoted myself to the study of electromagnetic fields and health problems. I have attended and sometimes presented at multiple science meetings each year, including events with the Bioelectromagnetic Society, the Society of Neural Oncology, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, and the Brain Tumor Epidemiology Consortium. And I have published peer-reviewed science studies on cell phones and brain tumors. Please read the report, Cell Phones and Brain Tumors, 15 Reasons for Concern, written by the International EMF Collaborative. The report is available to download at the website shown on the screen, and please share it widely in your community. Thank you.